you can imagine this device could tune over a much wider bandwidth, could replace multiple antennas or replace multi-resonant antennas. I'd like to share with you a little bit of our work on liquid metal antennas. So mercury is the most familiar liquid metal that people think about and unfortunately uh, mercury is toxic. So by process of elimination we've been working with gallium and, and alloys of gallium which are also liquid at room temperature. Unlike mercury, it, uh, the surface of it oxidizes and forms a skin and that allows us to control the, the shape of the metal. Uh, when I saw that as an as a antenna engineer, I immediately thought, well, if we can harness this, uh, there's a lot we can do. The uh, very first thing we did was simply inject the metal using a syringe. Um, it's really extremely simple. And the end result is you get um, you know, wires and, uh, and also antennas or any sort of metallic structures that have mechanical properties defined by the encasing material. So if you were to inject it into a rubber band-like material, you would end up with a rubber band conductor. In the case of, of our printing work, um, the, the metal comes out of the syringe, it immediately reacts with air to form this oxide skin, and as we um, move the syringe along the surface, the um, oxide sticks to the substrate and also stabilizes the structures mechanically. Um, so we can print them into lines and, or spirals, for example, and, um, and they hold their shape because they're essentially stuck inside of a little bag. <laughs> and the bag, in this case, is the oxide skin. And so the, the essence of our work is actually controlling the surface tension. Without the oxide, the metal assumes a very large surface tension and wants to beat up. And uh, we've developed a way to lower the surface tension substantially so that um, we can let other forces take over. In essence, that's what we're harnessing in collaboration with Professor Adams is we're uh, switching back and forth between a state of, of high surface tension and a state of low surface tension. So we went initially from a, a relatively low frequency, around 700 megahertz or so, uh, and then probed, then instructed the antenna to tune to about 1.2 gigahertz. And so the antenna will withdraw from the channel uh, relatively quickly uh, because we uh, are actually applying a uh, reductive bias and that bias removes the oxide skin along with the presence of the NaOH and uh, causes the surface tension to increase. As we near that frequency we uh, change the bias to an oxidative bias so that it will cause the oxide skin to regrow and then that will cause it to hold its position. You can imagine this device could, could tune over a much wider bandwidth, could replace multiple antennas or replace uh, multiple um, multi-resonant antennas that are on, on a mobile device uh, and allow you to cover more bands.